Hello and welcome to Cricket Mania, a heated confrontation or altercation between uh, English cricketer Jimmy Anderson and Indian cricketer Ravindra Jadeja has caused alarm bells to ring and ask, uh, lead us to ask the question, is cricket still a gentleman's game? The altercation took place a couple of days ago, but what's more interesting is the level of seriousness that's being assigned to this altercation, which was verbal and may have been physical as well, depending on who you believe. I ask, who do we believe? <laughs> <laughs> well, as of now, I mean, look, it's, it's reached a position where both teams have taken, you know, the, one is in the red corner, the other is in the blue. So, <laughs> okay. there was, I think, an attempt by the England uh, establishment mm -hmm. to kind of sit over the matter and hope that India would withdraw mm -hmm. or not lodge an official complaint. Mm -hmm. It didn't happen. Mm -hmm. I think the Indian team is very convinced mm -hmm. that, you know, action needs to be taken mm -hmm. and therefore England have also lodged a complaint against Jadeja because he's the other party to the right, application. Right, And the English uh, captain Alistair Cook says that this is India's way of ensuring that uh, Anderson is kept out of future matches. Well, he's accusing India of gamesmanship. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, we'll have to wait and see now that it's in the, the ball is in the ICC court, how it pans out. Mm -hmm. My own position is, if it was just another altercation, then mm. it could have been handled better. Mm. However, if there is enough evidence mm. of, say, physical abuse, because it's not a contact sport, cricket, mm. Mm. or even worse, if mm. there's racial abuse, mm. then obviously it's demanding of strict action. Okay. If it is not that, mm. then this might just end up becoming a pointless, mm. needless mm. storm in a teacup. Right. So as of now, I'm, and we're also going to be joined by umpire uh, Pilu reporter who was uh, active between 1984 and 1994, many international test matches and also as an independent umpire. Uh, he's the man, if you didn't know, behind the famous milkshake action to denote a fork. <laughs> <laughs> so not only milkshake, mm. you know that with, his, with a wave of his hand, he once uh, warned and cautioned Imran Khan right. that he better toe the line. Right. He's been tough with uh, Viv Richard. So, the interesting thing about Pillu Reporter is that he never let the reputation, mighty reputation of cricketers right. affect him. And I think why it's, it's great we've got him <laughs> here going because in this match, Anderson versus Jadeja, mm -hmm. obviously it was not just <laughs> while they were returning back to the dressing room that things started happening between the players. Right. It was happening and while... Was Dhoni the, also there with them. Yeah. With Dhoni the, in the middle. And mm -hmm. should the umpire have stepped in at the right time and prevented something like this happening hmm. is something that Pillow Reporter can tell us. What okay. role can umpires play? Right. So, uh, uh, Pillow, would you like to uh, give us your sense on how you viewed this altercation, which obviously for the, the way it's been treated comes after a very long time, almost uh, uh, six or seven years after the last major level three incident or offense was registered? Uh, I am totally against all this dirty behavior on the field. I would have definitely uh, not tolerated that. And I'm sure the umpire should have. At, in, at many cases, we have seen some umpires stepping in. But I don't know what happened this time. But uh, Anderson even earlier had a match with uh, uh, Ishan Sharma. Unnecessarily, he was provoking him. And one could make out from his lip movements what he was uttering. He was not blessing or wishing him good luck. So, this, uh, and this is, uh, not only this time, earlier also we have observed this, uh, he is if, uh, not a very fast bowler. You know, one can understand if very fast bowlers, they are hot-headed like Lily, Freddie Truman, etc. But not in this case. And whatever happened, of course, luckily I didn't see that incident because that time I was traveling. <laughs> But I came to know about it. It's a shame. I mean, just uh, maybe, maybe just these people still think that they are ruling the world. But uh, they are ruling uh, India also. No, not never. Right. Okay. So, uh, uh, Ayaz, you know, let's look at some of the earlier uh, altercations. You know, Ian Chappell versus Ian Botham, uh, Harbhajan Singh versus Andrew Simmons. Harbhajan Singh, of course, is now, uh, I mean, it's sort of etched in our memory yeah. in some ways. Monkey gate. Monkey gate. So, what's the common factor between them and do you see that continuing here, if any? I mean, was there any thread that you see or is it just sort of something that just happens on a hot day uh, in, a, in on a hot summer? No, I mean, competitive sport is, is not played you know, without passion. Right. You know, yeah. people, players get <laughs> very passionate. There's an adrenaline rush which mm. is happening. Mm. Uh, people are on edge. You know, a lot of players are insecure about their own performances. Mm. Uh, there's a psychological by-play which is going on between mm. teams. I think 
at the end of the day, most international players in mm. most sports, and mm. especially so in cricket, know how to draw the line, where to draw the line. Mm. Now, when you look at 125, 130 years of cricket, mm. it's not that you will not find any case at mm. all. There will mm. be many cases, mm. but it's not like every year you'll get 25 such cases. Right. So, but why did this go to uh, level 3 offence? I, th you know what I feel, and, and do tell our uh, viewers what a level three offence is, because it's clearly something that comes only for a really serious offence. Yeah, so level three offences, I understand it, and uh, Pilu Bhai can tell us a little more. Is that see now they filed level two offence against Jadeja, mm. because he attempted or made a charge against Anderson. Mm. The level three goes a step further, mm. which means you pushed or shoved him physically, and mm. or you made a verbal abuse, which right. could also be perhaps a uh, race, racist abuse, which yeah. was the charge against Harbhajan Singh yeah, yeah. in Monkey Gate. Yeah, yeah. That the, the implications of that are far graver. Mm. He could miss up to four test matches mm. or eight one-day matches. Mm. Uh, in the case of Jadeja, he could miss up to one test match, maybe two, two one days, or perhaps be fined 100% of his, 50% of his match fee. Uh, it depends on the ICC's uh, judicial committee mm. representative, uh, representative who is there. Mm. But <clears throat> the point is that. There are sometimes signals available that something is getting out of hand on the field of play. Mm. The captains should step in, or mm. fellow fellow players, mm. and certainly the umpires. Mm. What is happening in the modern game more and more, because there is a third umpire, there is a match referee, the on-field umpires are actually taking on less onus, this is the way I feel, mm. of addressing these issues. Apart from saying, you know, I have counted six balls, it's over, mm. because there is the third umpire giving a decision in, in in many cases, there is a DRS giving a decision for you. Mm. The onus of the on-field umpire has got eroded willy-nilly. Mm. And this is where I feel that in instances like this, when there is, you know, some slanging match going on between Anderson and Jadeja and even Dhoni is involved, he's there, Cook is there, mm. the umpire should have stepped in, called Cook, Dhoni is in the middle and said, guys... But the, the, the escalation seemed to have happened only after they went back into the... It village. seems to have happened yeah. there and that's now, that's oh, become the you know, the, the enigmatic part of the story because there seems to be no videographic evidence at all of what mm. has really happened. Yeah. There's only word of mouth. Mm. There's and each set accusations of accusations from... Each accusations are mm. flying thick and fast from either side. Right. So it makes it even more difficult for the ICC guy so, to step in. Uh, as we started out by saying that is cricket still a gentleman's game? And and are we do we feel that uh, this incident causes us to reflect on that question? I mean, or, or is it... I mean, if you ask, uh, is, without being cynical, but mm. I'm certainly skeptical, mm. I don't think cricket was ever a gentleman's game in that sense. It's imbibed a lot of the old style Victorian ethos mm. and it became a great, great catchphrase. I mean, mm. you know, you go back a hundred years in time, mm. you, you know, when cricket started, mm. the gamblers and the bookies were heavily involved. Mm -hmm. You know, so and, and, then, and then there's been body line and then there's been this and then there's been that. So, it's not been ruled by one, but right. compared to, you know, what the... What is implicit in the rules, in the ethos of the game, the way it's been projected, suggests that you know you must behave like a gentleman even under adverse circumstances. Right. So, uh, Pilu, let's put that question to you. I mean, do you feel that players are not able to uh, hold their cool, so to speak, anymore, or, or is this something that is always? Con I mean, this is consistent because once in a few years you will have uh, two players from any two teams breaking out uh, into some kind of argument or altercation. No, very rightly, I have said that these small things do happen in the, in the heat of the moment. One can understand. Uh, uh, and I, I also have the habit of always calling the captain, involving the building side captain, and see this guy. I would just uh, point out something, and I have got immediate response. And the captains, naturally, they feel offended. If the umpire has to say something about his player, very rarely he may try to defend his player. But there on the spot, the umpire has to say, what is going on? Does this bring grace to your team, your country, by this behavior? Just see what is the effect it gets. And I have succeeded in many occasions. Ellen Border and uh, uh, the was very over smart. He started speaking something. Immediately, he took him to task. The very next over, he waves me out this way. Thank you. Or oh, sorry. It has happened with 
uh, West Indian also. I, I pointed out certain times to Vivian Richards as a captain, see this guy. I have not come all the way over here to serve. And immediately you get the response. That makes a very big effect. When the umpire wants the captain to come in and control that player. So, even if it is the batting side, you remember Gambir, Gambir, uh, Gambir and Shane Watson in a test match. He literally showed Shane Watson. Now, Shane Watson is such a player, even if he is angry, he is always smiling only. Even if he wants to utter something, he will be smiling. But Gambir had to suffer. He lost his place and Murli Vijay stepped in and succeeded. So these things are to be controlled. I mean, I, I would say uh, sportsmanship has gone to dogs or uh, it is no more a, a gentleman's game. It is provided these people approach the game with that intention, that honor of, of uh, playing for the country. Yes, this is not a club cricket match. Yes, yes, if this were to happen in Azad or Cross Maidan, one could have understood. But this is in front of millions. I mean, because I include the television viewers also. Right. So, uh, what you're saying, Pillow, is that uh, two or three things have changed. Uh, in, in, in since then, I think one is uh, you're saying that uh, the 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 stakes are much higher because there are so many more people watching. Uh, the second is, uh, as Ayaz pointed out, uh, the nature of umpiring has also changed, and therefore the presence of an on-field uh, mediator, so to speak, is perhaps not there. And third could be that maybe the on-field mediator is not being firm enough, like you were in the examples that you quoted of women Richards and so on. Very very true. Because uh, if, if this game is played in the true spirit, nothing should happen that way. Yes, in the heat of moment, I can understand. But somebody has to control, somebody has to step in. Uh, it, it, it is just like a boxing in the ring. The referee goes and separates the two, you know, and something. Uh, that is not fair, I mean. It, and even the authorities, authorities, I mean, the match referee and who travel concerned, they have to come down very hard so that it can set a good example in the future. So now yes. there's a piquant dimension to this, uh, yeah. apart from all else, uh, yeah. Govind, is that what happens to this newfound brotherhood mm. that is now formed in the ICC because N. Srinivasan is the chairman of the ICC mm. and there is this club of the big three. Right. Why, why should that impact the players? Because and, uh, it's India versus England. Okay. You know, and there's a collaborative effort which has come about mm. between India at mm. the top mm. and Australia and England as the three members mm -hmm. who will, in a sense, they become the uh, controlling caucus of the sport. Right. And now there are two of these members fighting mm. amongst themselves and mm. chairman of the uh, uh, ICC mm -hmm. who was who is still but he side, side, stepped aside as, chair, as the president of the BCCI was otherwise always conf confronting the confronting the ICC on these matters. Right. But it, but it, now it, he has to take a top view. But that he has no choice, right? He has, I mean, no choice. He has to be like a judge. I mean, you know, there, here yeah. are two cases. And I think I he's mean, done each. that fairly well because okay. he said, look, this is going to be addressed by the ICC. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, as a BCCI president, I've sidestepped. Mm -hmm. You can go and speak to somebody in the BCCI. And there is the IC, ICC right. which is addressing. So, uh, Pilu, what's your sense about uh, how such matters should be dealt with? Uh, I mean, this is of course, uh, uh, is not unique uh, to this moment, but whenever such instances come up, should the standards of, uh, let's say, judgment and punishment be higher than maybe other games because the standards that are expected of this game are higher? Or should we be actually looking at the reverse where we say, okay, you know, you have so many rough games like uh, soccer and maybe hockey and so on. So let's let's treat it on par, uh, and therefore players' reactions also on par with those games. Yeah, one can understand is in football or hockey, these things are common, you know, bashing, pushing, and then the umpire shows that red card and yellow card and whatever it is. I I I, I would I would be a very sad person to see this thing happening, such thing on the, showing the cards happening in a cricket at least. And not at this level. Yeah, it may be at the lower level. Okay, 
But there is no need of caste. What, what is the umpire over there? Can't they control? Can't they come together? There are two umpires on the field. Maybe third and fourth and fifth and seventh are in the heaven. But what about those on the field? They have to immediately arrest the batter, call the captain. There, there you will get the result. Even the batting side will feel offended. I mean, it depends how you handle the situation. If you catch a thief, if the cop catches a thief on the street, what does he do? He gives him a bashing because he has the right, but not in cricket, at least on the field. Right. Okay. So, uh, as I think what Pilu is clearly saying is that, you know, cricket does need a different set of uh, rules to administer it. Not different set, but yeah. uh, 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 the, the, the tenor has to be different. It cannot be the same as other He's sports. also regretting the erosion of the yeah. power of the umpires. Yeah. Yeah. Umpire. Yeah. So, I just want to ask him. I like the one about five, four, five in heaven. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Pilu, why, tell me now with your vast experience as somebody who is to stand with great players around you and you know, they're all on edge. These are ultimately young, hot-blooded sports persons trying to win for themselves, their team, their country. And they will be on edge. They are, you know, it's like holding, uh, almost like holding a lunatic on leash. Now, how how did you sense that things would be going wrong? Is, is there something that you kept a watch out for? Some key words, some expressions? What was your tactic to ensure that things didn't get, all, get uh, out of hand on the field? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 as a human, I could immediately sense that there is some trouble brewing up and uh, uh, the reaction of the opponent. So I would be giving them a staring look and then say that, all right, shall I call up on your captain or shall I call up the manager on the field? Will that bring, bring you to senses? There immediately you get the result. The effect is there. You get that apology. Of course, I was never interested in the apology or uh, making a show or uh, of that sort. I just wanted to conduct the game on the field fairly, decently. That was always my intention. How do you see? That? I mean, you know, so we're talking about obviously the umpiring and whether they're stern enough or not on the on the field. I mean, what's your sense? I mean, amongst the some of the umpires that you've met in the last, let's say, decade or so. You know, I think the umpires, uh, the modern umpires, have actually reconciled to their diminished position in the sport, and mm -hmm. to ask them to change because they are they also under so much scrutiny, mm -hmm. media scrutiny and mm -hmm. technology scrutiny. It's like a run out decision or a stumping decision. Even you sitting in your drawing room, no, the guy is out, but the umpire asks for a third umpire's opinion mm. because he doesn't want to take that risk. Yeah. So then maybe it's also a good question. Uh, the good thing to ask: What's the primary role of an umpire on out there on the field? And I, mean, I know how much of it is to do with the umpiring the match and maintaining discipline. So I think you're absolutely right. I think this is becoming the fundamental question mm. that since so many of your other functions are reduced diminished. or diminished yeah. and you're counting the deliveries you will say over mm. or you know whatever even the no ball is now subject mm. to what the third umpire tells you at times yeah. in which case maybe this becomes of paramount importance mm. that how do you conduct the game right. without it becoming very schoolmasterly you know everybody every time a player says something to another player if you step mm. in it's going to I think there's something to be said about banter on the field it takes you know then it adds flavor but Players should know where to draw the line and certainly umpires should step in when they sense that players don't know where to draw the line. Right. So, uh, Pilu, last word from you. Uh, as you uh, look ahead, I mean, do you feel that the umpire should be more of a manager on field rather than just the person who is, you know, uh, obviously looking at the batsman and tracking the no balls and things like that? Yes, today, even after the batsman is out, the umpire wants the third umpire to tell him whether it was or no more. So what was he watching? He is first, even in our time, he has to watch the foot first and then the ball. Here they are, I think, ignoring and just presuming that this fellow might have overstepped. So that is why the third umpire. And then I, I feel uh, the present day umpires, although they are good, Sound in decisions, giving decisions, okay. Yeah, an odd mistake here or there is likely to happen. It used to happen even in this house also. But 
you one has to be firm what is the fire over there to conduct the game according to the requirements of the law so here they are i, I would say a little bit edgy as i have said maybe they they have a little fear factor fear factor of losing uh, for the games or something right so uh, go just to capture it again in natural i think mm. that the players have become really big mm. they are prima donnas in more ways than one mm. the stakes are so much bigger the empires have been dwarfed compared mm. to the players mm. which is not the case earlier mm. in cricket but in cricket. that's not happened in other games i mean you know like soccer being obviously the most yes, visible example yes it's not yeah. it's not perhaps mm. you know we don't know because mm. you know i mean messi winning the golden ball mm. is something that i may not necessarily agree with okay. the, mm. the pandering perhaps to a superstar there mm-hmm. but earlier the umpire was the authority mm. today i hardly ever see any captain of you know established captain coming under the umpire scrutiny and saying hey you're not allowed to do this you know mm. it's almost as if the umpires even support staff even in, in many cases the officials are scared about Right. what they say to the players taking on to the players right i think that's a good note to end on as i think the larger question really is we started by saying is this still a gentleman sport yeah. while it continues to be a gentleman sport i think what we are clearly saying is that the role of the empire needs to be more of a manager on the field who ensures things go well and is a disciplinarian which perhaps is not the case anymore today and while this particular case may progress we hope that in future empires will be stricter and more stern on field and have their presence felt or redefine what a gentleman is or redefine what a gentleman <laughs> is a good note to end on thank you so much for watching cricket omania with uh, pilu reporter and of course ayaz man